Hi everyone, in this video we are going to talk about the chapter 6 which is about supply, demand and government policies. This is a book of Gregory Mankiw, Principles of Economics. So first of all we need to talk about the price selling. So the price selling we say that there is a maximum price. Okay, so first of all imagine that we are in the market of hamburgers. We have here the supply curve and here the demand curve. This is the equilibrium for prices and quantities one. This is going to be the case when the price setting it is not binding. What does it mean? It means that the policy fixes a price max which is like higher to the equilibrium. So it means that it it doesn't have any change to the original or to the equilibrium case. On the other side we have the case where the price selling is binding. It means that it changes the quantity and the price in the market. So here is the price, here is the, the maximum price. So it means that the market, the suppliers, they cannot charge more than the, the than this price. Okay, so in this case, there is a difference, which is called the shortage. Why? Because this QS is the quantity that the suppliers they can supply, but on the other side, at this price, because it's lower to the equilibrium, the quantity demanded is higher. So this difference because there is a lot of people that they want to buy but there is just this quantity available so these old people they they cannot have this good there's gonna be a kind of rational like mechanisms like for example more lines or maybe suppliers they discriminate so discriminate which people they are going to provide a good so this is the, the problem with the price the price selling. It's just binding where the price is lower than the equilibrium. The other case is the price floor. So we are talking about the minimum the minimum price, which is oh, most of the cases is associated with the minimum wage, for example. So here we have first the first case which is not binding. So it's going to be the opposite. It's going to be where the minimum price is fixed lower than the equilibrium price because this is the minimum the minimum price but they are going to charge this price so this is not going to be any change in the market in the second case we are talking about where the price floor is binding so it is the case where the minimum price is higher than the equilibrium price in this case we see here a difference which is called surplus why because here we have the quantity demanded so it's going to be uh, lower than the equilibrium quantity because of the low demand higher price uh, lower demand but on the other side at this price the supplier they have more incentive to produce so they have this QS so this difference is a surplus there is available these quantities but the the price did one. So this could be like the if we talk about the the labor market, we know where the supplier there is a surplus, so there is more workers that they are like are just they are prepared for working instead of the demand of the companies. So this is given where the minimum wage have an incidence. So where the when the the price the minimum price is higher than the equilibrium price. So how taxes and buyers affect market outcomes? Imagine the same market of hamburgers. We have the supply curve and here the demand curve. So because of the buyers, they have to pay higher price. It means that it affects uh, initially the demand, the buyers. So in this case, it's going to, in, this is going to be. Uh, like uh, they have to pay a higher price okay so in this case the P1 is the initial price okay the price that they, they, they have to pay at first but because of the tax they now they have to pay this price 
which is P3. So this is the price that they paid at first. But with the tax, they have to pay, to pay this one. And uh, the P3 is the price paid by the buyers. But if we subtract P3 and P1, this is the value of the tax. So even the buyers, they pay more for the good. The sellers, they don't receive this quantity because this they have to pay the taxes for the government. So in this case, the P1 is going to be the initial price, but at the same time, after the tax, it's going to be the price received by the sellers. So taxes discourage market activity. When a good is taxed, the quantity of the good sold is smaller, as we see here, and in the new equilibrium. Okay, buyers and sellers share the burden of, of taxes. In the new equilibrium, buyers pay more for the good and sellers receive less. So it's interesting because even we are taxing buyers, it's going to be an effect to the sellers as well. So it doesn't matter that I'm just taxing the buyers, but it's going to affect suppliers as well. So now, what about the, how taxes on sellers affect the market? So here we have the, the initial price, which is quantity 1 on P1. So this is the, the initial price. And now this is going to be to the, to the sellers. So remember, when in effect the sellers, the supply, um, the supply is going to shift to the left. So here, this is the price. So here we have this was the initial price P1. P3 is the price that is paid for the buyers, which is higher than P1. But sellers again, they don't receive P3. They receive P2 because this one, the subtract of P3 minus P2, here is not P1, P2, is going to be the tax. Okay? So this is going to be the. the P2 is going to be the price uh, sellers receive. So we see here if I tax suppliers or if I tax, I mean, sellers or buyers, the effect is going to be almost the same. It doesn't matter who I tax, it's going to be affect because it's going to affect both sides. What is the importance of elasticity and tax incidence? The importance of elast elasticity in taxation is because it depends who is going to be more heavily affected. So here, for example, we have again, imagine that this uh, supply curve, as you notice, is kind of a little bit more light down. So this is more elastic compared with the demand. So what's happening here? Here we have the same case. Imagine that this is the price with the tax, that the price that the, the, the buyers they have to pay for. And this is the price P2 is going to be that they are going to receive. If you notice here, if you notice here, the change from P1 to P2 is shorter than the change from P1 for P3. It means that the, the buyers they have they are charged more with the tax. So what is the conclusion of that? the tax uh, falls more heavily on the more elastic um, on the more um, inelastic here is inelastic curve so the inelastic you are in this case you're going to be more affected by the tax if you are if you are more elastic like the supply curve is going to be less less affected so here is inelastic okay like we see here in the graph which is the more which is affected more is going to be the demand because it's more inelastic so if you are elastic you're not going to be so affected okay i hope it has worked see you the next video bye bye